That's what for people that come on. You can die, don't they? Oh, really? Thank you. Thank you. Look, there's a hank here. Do you see hank? Good morning, Gabby and Charlie and Frank. Can you put the fire in the I shall. Hi, Ron, Ben. Hi, Rowan, Caroline, and Sam. I don't know if you caught on that. I have a Sam. That's Jack. My youngest is Sam. Hi, Manny. Hi, Lucy and Molly. Hank is so sleepy. Morning, Maverick. Morning, Allison. Morning, Alexis. Good morning, Eliza and Alexis. Two Alexises in a row. Hi, Blake. Hi, Heidi, Bridget, and Davy. There's Gooby. Hi, Colin. We're not doing a chameleon. We are doing another kind of reptile today. Oh, okay. The adult Sam. Can you guys close the playroom door? It's 11 o'clock. It is 11 o'clock. We're not listening. We're going to put Hanky down. Good morning, Chris and Joshua. I'll be right back, everybody. Just a couple more minutes. Good morning, Helena. <laughs> Gooby just got down. Gooby is interested um, in the porch today because, uh, you know, it's so nice out today. Let's see, it's already 66 degrees. So we have our porch open and that's where my husband's working. Um, so they're very interested in being out there and seeing who they can see walk by in the neighborhood and what dogs they can bark at. Good morning, Adriana. Good morning, Hannah. I don't know what Wings of Fire is. I saw you guys writing that yesterday. I do not know what that is. So if somebody wants to explain. Good morning, Ella. Good morning, Nolan. Wait one more minute and then we'll get started. I don't know where Gooby is. Oh! <laughs> I think Gooby thought he was getting in trouble because he's hiding under my legs. If I want to see, real quick. Real quick, one more good morning from Gooby. Good morning! Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. All right. So I'm going to stop this. All right. So we have three animals today that were requested. So we're just going to jump right into it. <laughs> I'm watching, I can see the video, so I just reacted to it, I can see Hank dancing again, so that was funny. Okay, 
So we're gonna start with a bunny or rabbit, depending on how you want to look at it. It's perfect since Easter is this weekend and um, bunny I've sort of worked out a drawing of, sort of looks cute and cartoony, could be a real bunny or could, you could sort of fashion it to be an Easter bunny. It's pretty cute. Yes, my profile picture is of me and Hank and I'm wearing my Hank t-shirt too. Okay, so, um, a bunny or a rabbit is a small mammal, and bunny is commonly used for describing a baby or a young rabbit. So I might go back and forth between the name bunny and rabbit when I'm talking about it, but it's essentially the same thing. Um, there are about 300 breeds of domestic rabbits. So domestic rabbits are rabbits that you would see in people's houses or on farms, um, and 13 species of wild rabbits. And a wild rabbit is what you would see see running around your backyard maybe the cottontail rabbit with the sort of the brown color with the puffy white tail that's considered a wild rabbit and we have tons of them in our neighborhood I'm sure you do as well um, and the males are called bucks and the females are called does and if um, you know anything about animals which I know all of you do um, that's also the male and female term so I thought that was pretty interesting because I didn't I didn't know that and then, like I said, a bunny is commonly referred to as a young rabbit. A bunny. Um, and a group of them is called a colony or a nest. Um, and I know that we have some, um, a bunny colony or nest that is in our neighborhood. Like when I go on a walk, there's a, big, a bush at the end of somebody's driveway. And there's um, a nest of bunnies that live there. Um, and they have long ears. And that helps them detect and avoid predators. So they um, they have the ears so they can hear if somebody's coming to get them or get their babies. And they generally eat grass and leafy weeds. Okay, so let's get started with our bunny. We're going to make a rainbow and two ovals. And this is actually the rainbow is the bunny's the top of the bunny's head and the two ovals are going to be the bunny's cheeks so actually you can make them you know what freeze on that i didn't make quite make the cheeks big enough outside of the rainbow. I sort of made them stop at the rainbow. So they should go outside. All right, and then um, we're gonna go ahead and add the rest of the bunny's face, well, almost all its facial features. We're gonna add a nose here that's an upside down triangle. And then Couple parts that's a mouth and his chin. You can add some little teeth in here if you want to. So it's a lot of details right there in the center. And then you're going to add the eyes. The eyes come up from the cheeks. And then let's add some eyelashes. And then add some eyebrows and some whiskers. And then, of course, the ears. Their signature long ears that I said were important to keeping those or listening for those predators. Okay. 
Now we're going to sort of add like a fluffy chest area. They sometimes have that um, fluff in the front. And it's going to be sort of um, like a drop, like an upside down droplet shape or a leaf shape. I'm going to hold it here for a second because I know I'm going kind of fast. Then we're going to add the body. So then you're going to see how it's kind of forming off to the side and it's going to go around to make the its back and backside and then up to make its hind leg. So it starts around and then comes up to make that sort of hind quarter leg. All right, so now we're going to add the front feet before we add those back feet. And the first front foot comes here and circles around and gives a couple of toes. And this foot over here, I'm going to do the same thing. And a couple of toes. Hi, Juliet. And then we're going to add that foot onto that um, back behind quarter, I guess. And then another foot that you just sort of see the back. And then, of course, we need a tail. And I'm looking at mine, this sort of looks like he has a beard. I would actually make this foot kind of go curved here a little bit more. So kind of attack that. I think that's a great idea to turn it into an Easter bunny. You give him like a bow, a basket. You can color him, Eastery colors. I think I made mine, where is mine? I made mine gray and pink and white. So I made mine pretty generic. That's our bunny. I'll hold it here for a few minutes. All right. So now, because it keeps getting loud, my kids are cleaning up their playroom and um, Whenever they open the door, it's really loud. All right, so another um, request is going to be next. Can we keep the door closed at all times, please? Okay, sorry. All right, so this is also a request that came from many people. A lot of people had different reptiles that they wanted to do. Um, and I think somebody, had, sorry, I don't remember who it was, but if it was you, you can shout out. Um, that somebody really, 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 really wanted to do a bearded dragon. So that's what we're doing. Um, so if it was you, shout it out on the comments so I can shout it out. But um, a bearded dragon is a reptile. And there's about eight to nine species. And the common name for them is bearded dragon. The technical name is something I had never heard of, and I don't think I wanted to try to pronounce it, so I didn't even write it down. Um, but it's the common, the common name is bearded dragon because of the underside of their throat, it looks like they have a beard, but it's um, part of their skin. And they like the warm, um, they're from warm places, so they like to be warm. They're from deserts in Australia, um, and they like arid and subtropical woodland savannas and deserts, so they like to bask in the warm sun, like basking on rocks or laying on um, laying on branches, and they like to, like I said, be warm. Um, they are very popular as pets because they're relatively easy to care for. Now I say that when we looked into getting one for my son, 
um, there's two things that stressed us out about it is that they need to have a lamp. They need to have a warming lamp because um, they need to be at a certain temperature. And I, like I said, they need to like bask in the warmth. So you need a heating lamp. And the second thing is that in the wild and in um, captivity, they eat insects. And so we would have had to have to feed them live crickets that you can buy from the pet store. And I said, that's where I drew the line. I said, I'm not coming up to the pet store and buying live crickets once a week. Oh, that just gives me the willies. So no thank you on that. But they do eat crickets. So uh, if you have a bearded dragon, I'm more than impressed that you can do that. Now, you may also feed them something else. So I'd love to hear that if you have another them that isn't quite as gross as feeding them live crickets. Um, and they were actually only introduced as pets um, in the 1990s. Now, for all of you children out there, that sounds like years ago, like the 90s. Well, that was so long ago. But for me and maybe your parents, it seems like the 90s was just about 10 years ago. <laughs> so it seems to me that they haven't been domesticated as pets in the U.S. that long, but I guess they really have because the 90s was a long time ago, 30 years ago. Um, and they are a solitary animal. They like to be kept by themselves. Um, and so you shouldn't put two bearded dragons together because they would fight. Um, they get to be about 16 to 24 inches long, so they can, I know there's some of them are pretty big, and they live for 10 to 12 years in captivity. So that um, is a pretty long time for um, an animal um, to keep it in a, an aquarium in your house and take care of it and feed it all those crickets. No, thank you. That's, like I said, that's where I drew the line. We were looking at a bearded dragon or a lizard. Um, and then that's when we settled on the hamster because it was not gross, except for all the feces we had to clean up. <laughs> okay, so let's start our bearded dragon. They need to be like. I think um, the pet shop by us. We're in Ellicott City, so we have the pet. There's two pet shops by us: one by Chen and Forest, and one over here by Giant. And the one we went to was the Giant one, and they only, at least I, as far as I remember, had live crickets to share uh, or to sell. Sorry, not to share. Um, all right, so. Um, we're going to start this bearded dragon. Yes, it was 30 years, I know. But it seems like, seriously, it seems like the 90s was last week. No, not that, not that short. But like really like 10 years ago. But I know it's not. All right, here we go. So here we go. We're going to start with the head. And at first it's going to seem a little strange, the markings we're making. And then it all sort of all come together. So we're going to start with a little rainbow. And that's actually going to be the eye area that you're going to be able to see. Then we're going to add the other eye that's sort of, the eyes are on the side of the head. So when we draw the other eye area, you're just going to sort of see the back of the eye. All right. Now we're going to add the rest of its face, and the next part is going to be sort of where the mouth comes out. And now we're going to add the parts that make him look like he has a beard, sort of like the spiky scales. And we're going to do some on this side. And then some around here. We're gonna add a leather little line right here. I'm gonna pause so you can get cut up. And we're gonna add the mouth and the eye. So the mouth is going to come up and down here. It almost looks like a frown. Yeah. 
Shooting Cam Me Books is Pod Purple. Okay, now we're going to add an eye. So the eye starts as an oval. And I think it's really important to do this, what I'm about to do to the eye, because they sort of have that mean look to them. And I'm sure they're very nice. They do have that um, sort of like I'm going to fight you look. And that comes from making a little line like this. And then making so just making that little divot or that little loop that looks like maybe um, this eyelid is coming down a little bit, that really makes a difference. All right, now we're going to add the back. The back comes out from these scales here. And then um, it comes down a little bit and then more goes this way. I know this one's a little complicated, so I'm going to stop here so you can get caught up. The next thing we're going to add is one of the front legs. And it sort of has a grip like this, like if it was on the ground like that, sort of gripping. So that's how we're going to draw its little feet. So it's going to start about here. Again, I'm using pen. So if you're using pencil and you can sort of Erase as you need to. Now we're going to make the belly. And the belly is going to swoop down um, and go attach, sort of connect where this would be, except his arm is in front of it. It's going to Go like that. This is one that you might want to go back and watch again and kind of slow it down because the steps are sort of odd. And when I was trying to come up with them, trying to simplify it the best way I could, um, but there's just so much going on with it with all the scales. So All right, so now we're going to do the other leg and it's going to come off here and do that same grip. Okay, so when sort of crawling along, it's more upright on its front legs. It sort of holds himself up in like, almost like a push-up position. And its back legs, even though they're gripping on the ground, they're sort of pushing off almost in like a frog kind of way. So the back leg that we're going to do back here, it sort of almost looks like it's laying on the ground. So we're going to start it back here, just about like right where these scales are, and just above them. And it sort of comes, and it sort of looks more floppy. And then has the scales up. And then we're going to add the tail. And they have nice long tails. It's going to, it's just going to come off the back here. 
curve around. All right, so this is the basic bearded dragon. And when it comes to, hold on, let me cut my pen real quick. When it comes to coloring this, like, like I've always said, it doesn't have to be exact. Most bearded dragons are sort of the color of a camouflaging in a desert or a tree or a rock. So they sort of have that neutral tone. I made mine sorry, sort of like a tan, shades of tan. And I did do some stripes on his legs and on his tail. So you can make it however you want. Um, it would be really cool to see like a shades of blue and you can say that he likes to camouflage with water surroundings or maybe he's um, bright pinks and he likes to hang out in the flowers or something. I don't know, just some different ideas. So you don't have to make it the neutral colors um, of what a, uh, sorry, bearded dragon would be in, in, in real life. You can make it however you want. Click on something. That is our little dragon. Oops. Wrong one back. And then the last one was also highly recommend or highly requested. And it's a mammal that's related to the weasel. Can anybody guess what that might be? Ella, I'm writing down golden retriever puppy. So there we go. All right. I did. Tons of comments in golden retriever. I just wrote it down. I had to wait till I got um, to a stopping point to pull out my paper, otherwise I would forget. So anyway, the mammal that's related to the weasel is a ferret. So we are gonna be drawing a ferret, and typically ferrets are brown, black, white, or mixed. Uh, and when I was drawing mine, when I did, did my practice one, I did was just sort of making it black and white, that's some of the pictures I saw. But then when I was drawing my final, I made it, I started to do a black, and I added some pinks. I made mine black and pink, because why not, right? Yeah, so we are, our ferret can be whatever color you want, and they're generally um, 20 inches long. So they're really long. They have that long body like um, a weasel also does, um, and like Hank does. <laughs> I think Hank looks like a ferret sometimes, long body. Um, and they can be one and a half to four pounds, so they're kind of small. So they're 20 inches, so they're light for the, the length that they are. And they live about seven to so around mm, some of some dogs live about that long cats usually a little longer and in nature their diet is small mammals like mice or chipmunks or something like that um, but in um, in captivity you're gonna feed them meaty dry food and sometimes they'll eat cat food um, but they need to eat often because they have a very fast metabolism and they move really fast as well um, so they would probably, I don't know how many times a day, but more than like our dogs eat in the morning when I get up and um, late afternoon, like between three and four o'clock. A ferret might need to eat twice as many times so in the morning, maybe lunchtime, afternoon and evening because they are, their metabolism is really fast. Right, so let's start with our ferret. Okay, so the ferret has a little, it, the, most of its body is long, and its head is kind of small, and then it's a long body and a long tail. So we're going to start with the head, and the head sort of comes around as a little nose, and then a little mouth. It sort of actually looks like an amphibian kind of head at first. And then we're going to, let's go ahead and give it a little eye. So it stops looking so bizarre. And some little ears, they have little ears on the side here, and then one on the side here. 
And he needs a little, like, little nose. Now he's starting to look more like a mammal. Um, and then we're going to add his neck and his long body. It sort of has a bump at the end. And we'll add the bottom part of the neck and then the front foot. And then the underlying part of the body and a back leg. And then a really long tail. And then if you want to, you can add, you'd want to add some texture for fur. So you can add some whiskers. And then as you're coloring it, you might want to add texture because they are furry and they're not slick down. A weasel is more slicked down, whereas the um, ferret has more fur. I just had a little bit of fur, but you could add it with the, um, with your pencils, colored pencils that can fur to it. Now, when I was drawing mine, because we, our pet shop has, you know, the smallish windows, I couldn't fit my tail stretched out like this, so I kind of made it curl up. I don't know if ferrets tails do that, but I was running out of room, and I know that the tail is important um, for a ferret. It's an important part of it. So I want to make, make sure I included the tail. All right, so I'm going to show you my final, as I usually do. So he, here's my bunny. And you can see I made it pink and gray and white. And I gave him a little bit of bunny food. And I left most of my background blank so I can add some stuff to it. Maybe I will draw a little Easter basket. That'll be fun. And then I have my bearded dragon over here. Oh, nope, over here. <laughs> and um, again, I, I didn't give him, I should probably give him, so what did I say, they eat grasses? Is that what? No, they eat crickets. Oh gosh, how could I forget that? I don't think I want to draw a little cricket. So maybe I'll just give him um, like a branch or a rock or something over there that he could lay on. And then, oh, there's my ferret then. Um, and like I said, I made him pink and black and white, uh, or light pink, black, and dark pink. And then I need to add some stuff in there. Maybe I can like hang some things down. I feel like they would like to play with stuff. I don't know. So I'm gonna hold it back like this. So you can see the whole thing. And I think I've mentioned many times, but as we are finishing this up and as these um, windows get filled in, looks like we have seven more, then I'll really start coloring my backgrounds and this doorway. Right now I kind of just left it because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. Um, so it'll it'll be finalized. This is just sort of like the, the beginning, the start of all the animals being drawn in their spots. Um, Hanky, come here. I'm gonna try to get him uh, so he can say bye. Hold on. Oh, it's so sleepy. So sleepy today. Oh my goodness, you're making such noises. Oh, he is so tired. <laughs> All right, so tomorrow, I lost my paper, but I have three lined up for tomorrow. And I'm still needing probably two more requests. So there's something you really want to do that we haven't done in our zoo or our aquarium or something. Like, I'm not going to do a lizard because we just did a bearded dragon. Um, we did do a snake on the farm, remember. Um, so if anybody has their ideas, and we are for Gabby and Charlie, 
and all other pug lovers, we are doing Frank tomorrow. And Frank is a pug, so we are repeating. So everybody loves a pug. But Frank is a black pug. So he will look different than Hank on the farm. Hank is at the farm. Frank is at the pet shop. Um, I believe I said next week was Jurassic Park. So we'll have um, some ant dinosaurs and maybe some other reptile animals. Maybe we can do something, another kind of snake, like the big scary ones or something like that. All right, so I'll have a wonderful day. It's going to be beautiful outside. It's going to rain tomorrow. So make sure you get outside today. Um, spend some time with your family. Maybe take a walk. If you have a pet, take them for a walk, right? You want to go for a walk? He gets really tired on walks. He can't go very far. <laughs> All right, have a great day, and I will see you tomorrow at 11. Bye.